you know, there's this whole myth about, oh, it predicts the future. Yes, it does tell you about the future, but it also tells you about the past, the lessons learned and experienced. And it also tells you about your present day and the energy surrounding you now to where it might take you in the future. So tarot doesn't create your future, you create your future. But what tarot does is it gives you choices. It gives you ways that you can empower yourself. Today, we're talking about an interesting topic. We're talking about tarot cards. And is it truly magical or not? So tarot cards is something which there is, there's a lot of controversy about. And we thought we'll delve into it today. I have with me here today, Natasha Keswani, who's a tarot life coach and counselor and energy healer. She's been working with tarot cards for about eight years now. Her work with clients as a tarot life coach is to empower them and coach them by providing an enriching experience and helping them to bring in what they already know in their subconscious. Uh, she uses tarot as a guiding tool with a lot of other healing modalities as well. But let's begin with how does tarot work? So tarot is basically a sort of divination tool. It's a set of uh, 78 cards, which has all these images on them. And, uh, and they're used in different kinds of ways. I will take you through everything. But it's more about using your intuition to read these cards. You know, there's this whole myth about, oh, it predicts the future. Yes, it does tell you about the future. But it also tells you about the past, the lessons learned and experienced. And it also tells you about your present day and the energy surrounding you now to where it might take you in the future. So tarot doesn't create your future. You create your future. But what tarot does is it gives you choices. It gives you, it, it shows you ways that you can empower yourself. And that's what I do with my clients, where I stay away from telling them what will happen and what will not happen. And I do it in a more empowering way for them so that they take the responsibility to make the changes and the choices in their life. When I'm looking at the cards, I'm looking at it from a collective consciousness, mm -hmm. but also from a unique uh, intuitive perspective. So when, I, when I'm working with the cards, I shuffle the cards, I connect with the energies of the client and uh, through energy and synchronicity, I instill the energies into the cards and then I shuffle it, I lay them out, you know, and then there are certain positions and combinations and spreads that we use to read the cards. This will give you a reflection of what's happening in present day and where you want to go. So depending on the client's questions, then uh, we ask the tarot very specifically uh, what they would like to know. Of course, um, I'll explain to you what the tarot cards are like. They're, like I said, they are 78 tarot cards and they are broken up into a few categories. So we have the major arcanas and we have the minor arcanas. The major arcanas are about archetypes, you know, uh, phases, themes, uh, big life lessons, um, changes that would happen on a significant phase in their life or a turning point in the life, uh, karmic lessons, and just universal gen uh, energies in general. The minor arcanas are more for like temporary situations, day-to-day -day situations, and uh, they are broken up into four categories, which is uh, the cups, which, you know, represents your... Uh, emotions, your romance, your feelings, your creativity. Then we have the pentacles, which is more about the materialistic side of things. Uh, so like work, finance, career, health, security. And then we have the wands, which are more about energy and enthusiasm and, you know, what passion is going through the person or uh, the inspiration, opinions, beliefs, that those are all the wands. And then we have the swords, which is the air element. And uh, that is more about the thoughts. So like your rational thinking, you know, uh, your intellect, your thoughts. So that's how the uh, cards are separated. And then we have the four court cards, uh, which are more about personalities and uh, how they are, uh, they depict the energy and the personality of a person or the situation or if there's a stage or development in someone's life, like, you know, the maturity level. So there's the page, the knights, the queens and the kings. So it goes from like a little bit immature to, you know, having maturity in something, again, relaying to the um, relaying to the element that we're dealing with. So like maybe the king of pentacles, you know, or the king of cups. 
so he's more in, uh, he's more like um, you know emotionally mature the king of cups because that the emotions are the cups so uh, examples like that you know we look at the numerology we look at the symbology we look at uh, the imagery in the cards and then we start to form the stories in the cards by looking at different things so uh, depending on the client when we when I connect with the client's energy and I ask the questions to the cards, there may be certain elements from the cards that are popping out for me. It may not be for the other person sitting there, but for me and for this person, like uh, the dress color will pop out or the background color will pop out and something will, and then my intuition will guide me what to say to the client. What I do with my clients is I stay away from the fate-based questions, you know? So it's moving away from fate-based questions into more uh, choice-based questions. So what can I do to, you know, uh, attract the right a, a life partner for myself or what will I experience when I take up this job so you know it gives you an idea yes you can ask should I take up the job will it be okay for me to take up the job and I have spreads for that but if I want to get into more specifics and give the client more detail onto what the cards are saying I will ask deeper questions as we call it I keep to the heart of the question but I break it down into mini questions uh, and I pull cards for that so that I can give maximum input or maximum information to the client. So ultimately, it's still, a, it's still their decision at the end of the day to make that choice of whether they want to make that change in their life. So you can't you know, call me in, you know, three months later and say, oh, but this didn't come true and that didn't come true. It's like, what steps did you take? And I sit with my client and I coach them and I counsel them to make, you know, to take that steps for themselves. Okay. And tell me something, Natasha, you, you talked about major arcanas and minor arcanas. So for people listening in, do you want to explain that? And also explain to us, is tarot relevant just for short term issues? Like, you know, something that I'm expecting to happen in my near future or for major life path guides? guidelines okay so I'll, I'll first tell you what a major arcana looks like or a minor arcana looks like so i have here a card called a lover's card there's a man and a woman in the card and yes. you know there, there's an angel looking over them and uh, there's there's a sun in the background and there's a mountain as well when i'm looking at a card like this now typically this card you know depicts choices it depicts uh you know a, a, a new relationship or you know if if this comes up in a reading for someone where uh they're asking me about their relationship and if this comes as a relationship i would say yeah it's great it's fantastic you know at the same time i would see their energy in the relationship and the other person's energy in the relationship and in order for it to be fantastic i will tell you this is the change you need to make here this is the change you need to make here. And that's where this is leading to. So it's where you are in alignment with your choices. It's in alignment with who you are. You are, you know, there's an angel looking over you. So, you know, you are blessed in some way. Um, at the same time, there are peaks. There's a mountain peak over here. So you can be going through some kind of obstacle or there may be something where, um, you know, y'all are not sure about each other, but if you'll work through it, then y'all can come out of it. So there are lights and shades of all the cards, even some of the so-called, uh, you know, bad cards in the tarot. Like, for example, I have, uh, we have a card in the deck called the death card. So let me describe it. There's a horse with a skeleton sitting on it. Does it always look like this in the deck of tarot? Yes, always. Okay. okay. Always. And then you have these individuals that are, have fallen down. OK, now, when typically a card like this comes up in a reading, someone might say, oh, my God, is someone going to die? No, the death card represents regeneration, transformation, changes, endings and new beginnings. It also will tell you maybe you need to let go of a situation so that something better can emerge for you. So that's where it tells you, you know, you've got to pause and step back and see what change do you need to make in your life? Do you need to kill your ego? I don't look at it as a bad card. I would look at it as, okay, what is the change? What is the big change that is coming for me? Because it's a major arcana. So what is the big change that is coming for me in my life? In the minors, we have something like the ace of pentacles which is the first card in the pentacles uh, element uh, so because i told you the elements of pen and pentacles is about work finance you know health security an ace would typically represent a, like a, you know a new beginning so the mm -hmm. aces represent new beginnings new potential so this could potentially mean like a new opportunity new financial opportunity new job opportunity um and then you know i would read this with a combination of other cards to give you more insight into what it is but typically if i'm just giving you a meaning of the card this is what that card would mean 
So typically an ace of pentacles has one star. Is that right? It has one star, yes. One it has five pointed star, which is Correct. the pentacle. Like, like the eight of pentacles has eight stars, you know, mm -hmm. and this card is like, because the eight, now if I read the eight, the eight in a numerology is about mastery, is about action, you know? So it's like this person is taking the action to work hard. Now, if I'm reading this card in a relationship, I would say you would really have to work hard at your relationship. Do you use it more for short term, more for long term, for both? I like to read tarot for up to nine, nine to 12 months. OK, and this is because um, when I'm reading for a client, typically I'm working to empower them in a situation. I'm looking for them to make the changes in their life. So if they're not going to do the work, the result or the outcome is what the tarot would then say. Because I always say tarot is subject to change. It's nothing is permanent in tarot, but you've got to make, if you're getting a warning, if you're getting a sign, if you're being told something where you can make the changes so that something improves for you, why not do it? Mm -hmm. Otherwise, that is the outcome that you will be expecting, you know, six months down the line, nine months down the line. So I try to limit it to one year. So I prefer that the client takes that responsibility for themselves. They, they make that change in their life so that, you know, they don't have an ultimate outcome. It can change for them. Yes. If you're going to be asking me, shall I go to this university or would this uni what will I experience if I go to this university? And that's a big life decision. So yes, then I will typically pull the cards and say, you know, this place would suit you better. This place would suit you better. And then whatever, whatever my intuition may tell me at that time in regards to the safety, security, course wise, would you enjoy it? And tell me, why do people typically come? What do they come seeking that when they come to you and when pe most people come to you and ask you to do a tarot read? So generally it's to make choices and decisions. That's one of them, you know, and uh, the tarot, if they, if they want to know something about themselves, so more like self-exploration, um, then about practical questions about life, you know, whatever is going on in their life. It can also be used for something like uh, business planning, you know, so uh, for example, um, what are my lessons from the past month? What am I going to experience in the next month? You know, it kind of gives you that idea of what's coming or uh, how can I make most use of uh, something within my business? Is it going to work for me? So it can also uh, guide you in creative endeavors in your careers. Then, of course, you have people coming to ask about relationships. You have people coming to ask about family and business dynamics. You have people coming to ask about health, parenting, you know, understanding different personalities that people interact with. So, and even deeper issues like, you know, fears or anxieties or something like self-worth or self-esteem, the tarot gives information like that. And like when I'm reading for someone, say, in a relationship and I say why the relationship is not working, I pull up, you know, personality spreads of that person in the relationship with their partner and similarly for their partner so that I can look fully at the dynamic that's occurring in front of me. And then I will tell them this is what is happening. This is the change that needs to be made or I don't feel that this relationship will go ahead, but it is for you to decide. So I will never tell somebody you need to break up with this person. You need to marry this person. You need to not be with this person. It's your choice at the end of the day, but I will guide you of what's coming up. But Natasha, tell me about some experience that you've had with Tara, which even blew you away. Um, I had a client about two weeks ago and she had come to me in general to do a tarot reading for herself. But one of her main concerns was her brother. And she said, you know, he's feeling very depressed and, you know, I'm a bit worried about him. He's going through a very bitter divorce. He's got two small children and I don't know what to do about him. So I said, all right, let's have a look at what's going on. And then I pulled up the personality of him and I pulled up of where he is in his life. And in that moment, I got a little bit worried. So I found him to be suicidal. I found him to be, uh, depending on what the cards were telling me, I found him to be, uh, you know, not wanting to live, wanting to hide under his blanket, pretty much one foot in the grave and one foot out. It was like that. And I had to be very gentle when I told my client that. I had to tell her in a very, uh, in a very calm way and uh, you know, compassionate way, but she understood because she was watching it all along. And she's the older sister, he's a younger brother. So she was very worried about him. And then I told her, let me see how you are interacting with him. So I pulled her personality with respect to being, you know, her, the older sister and, you know, the kind of uh, the kind of way she interacts with him. And I found her to be very harsh. So I said, 
that we have to change things around here. If you want your brother to live, we've got to change a bit of the dynamic over here. Everybody needs to stop picking on him. Firstly, change the language patterns you are using with your brother. So be a bit more loving. Don't get irritated. Don't get angry. He's not using his mind. He's not using his brain because I could see his brain power was completely shut down. From the cards, I could see his brain power had completely shut down. He was not able to comprehend anything anyone was telling him, let alone his siblings or his uh, family members or his children or his ex-wife or even some, even his lawyer. So I okay. said, you've got to change the entire way you are interacting with him. He's feeling very unloved. He's feeling very alone. And you need to just you know change that with him. So she went away and she picked up the phone and she called him. And the one thing she said to him was, you know what? I love you. And he broke down. This is a grown man who had you know, heard his sister say this to him after I don't know how many months or years. And he just broke down. He calls up her daughter and says, you know, I can't believe she said this to me. And you know, it's just changed my whole outlook. I don't feel alone anymore. And I feel a little bit supported. And the sister called me back and she says, I don't know what happened, but things are just starting to shift and change. Somebody who was so shut off from taking help. He didn't want to go see a psychiatrist because he didn't want to take you know, uh, antidepressants or any of that. So I said, let's work with energy. You know, let's work through healing. I said, let's start the healing process and tell him to call me and have a chat with me. She spoke to him. He was very skeptical, but he decided to call me and we didn't do tarot. All I did was have a chat with him. And while I was talking to him, he was breaking down. And I said, don't worry, we will work through this. We'll work through it with healing. We will work through it with family constellation. Whatever you're going through, we will change it and we'll shift it together. But I need your cooperation and I need you to be on board with it. And he was like, 100%, let's do it. So you know, that was an experience that I had that was so profound. And when I, and we already did two family constellations for him before I had the chat with him. So when I spoke to him, he was in a completely different frame of mind. And he confirmed to me that he would have probably killed himself if it wasn't for his two kids. So mm -hmm. what I picked up in the cards and what he was telling me, they totally matched. I'll give you my experience. This, my experience is as recent as last year, actually. Typically in the summer, you know, everybody likes to go on holiday, you know? Mm -hmm. So I too wanted to go on holiday and I was planning my trip. I was trying to plan my trip all along and I wanted to fly out in June. And somehow I, I said, let's decide, let's look in the cards. Let me see what I'm going to experience when I go on holiday. I was just trying to do a reading for myself. And I was also talking to my healer in India. And I said, uh, let's do some cards together because I want some clarity of when I can travel and how how I need to do it. Mm -hmm. And the cards just said, no, no to travel. It kept right. saying no, no, no. And I kept saying, why? Like July came, no, August came, no, uh, September came, no. And I was like, I don't understand. And, you know, you would sometimes just say, oh, forget it. Let's just get on a plane and go. What does it matter? But I followed the guidance. I followed the guidance because I had a family emergency in July where had I traveled and had my mom traveled, it would have been a little bit disastrous for us. So that's, I'm saying from my experience, and that was when I consulted the cards and the cards had said, no, don't go. But Natasha, tell me about a situation where you've seen that the cards haven't worked. There are a couple of things over here. One is, so I avoid doing tarot for myself when I'm emotional or my energies are low. So it doesn't typically work at that time because that's the energy you're putting in the cards. And if you're sitting with a low emotional energy, then what you are reading is Basically, it's going to reaffirm your fears or it's going to make you more anxious. So I usually I either get, you know, my mentor to read my cards for me, you know, or I will uh, read it when I'm feeling a little bit more composed with myself. And I know I can make objective decisions and I'm not being, you know, cornered into something. The other thing with the tarot is that, you know, how you just spoke about the free will choice that mm -hmm. is typically when uh, tarot doesn't work. So. For example, if I'm reading for a client who comes to me with a relationship issue, now I am reading her cards. I can tell her what to do. I can't tell her what he should do. So right. how he behaves, what changes he decides to make in his life, they are all dependent on him. If she can guide him to make those changes in a very loving and compassionate manner, great. But if I tell her, maybe you make the changes and maybe he can then change depending on that, again, great, that, if that would help. But here, everybody's free will choice is involved. So if he decides that he wants to stay the way he is, he's not going to make the changes in his life. He's not going to work through the pain, the traumas, whatever is causing him to behave in such a manner, um, then I can't really 
help the individual too much. I can only tell you, this is what you are experiencing. This is what you're going through. Maybe you, either you get out or you really have to work hard at it and work hard at, you know, maybe getting him to come in and do some of the work or get some counseling or, you know, so that your relationship does work. Secondly, the other thing is something like legal case. If I'm reading cards for you on a legal problem, I can tell you typically, I can just give you a general idea of what's happening, what the other aspects are like, like what's going on with the case, the uh, individuals and the dynamics being played out over here. I can give you information on that. Can I win the case? I don't know. Depends on the judge, depends on the other party, depends on all the other people, you know, uh, depends on, you know, who to be careful of. You've got to like, understand over here if i'm just working with the tarot i can't give you this kind of information yes if we go into other healing modalities we can check out further how we can change the energy of the situation which could give you a possible favorable outcome even then that is not guaranteed at all but uh i don't typically i like to read for legal cases like that where somebody asks me am i going to win the case or what if i don't you know and am i going to go to jail i don't know even for something like health Yes, I can give you a general idea of what's happening with your health. You know, I can maybe sense that you're having a back issue, a liver issue, you know, an organ issue. But please go to a doctor and get medical treatment. I am not a doctor over here. I can guide you that I'm sensing something to do with your health. Again, we can use healing to work through that. But if I'm just doing a reading, please go to a medical doctor and seek guidance and help over there. How would you advise people to start using tarot as a tool? There's just two ways, to be honest. Either you go see a tarot reader. Secondly, if you're interested, then buy yourself a, you know, a deck of cards. If, uh, if you're interested in just reading tarot for yourself or you just want to like play, you know, you just want to tap into your intuition and sharpen it, pick up a de deck of cards, you know, and uh, you can go through, you can go through the imagery. And then there are loads of courses online where people can typically learn the tarot. For example, if I'm feeling very low on self-confidence or, you know, the inner strength that I need, I will typically pick up, uh, you know, the, uh, the strength card in the tarot deck, you know, like that. Yeah. There's a line and there's a lady. And the lady is sort yeah. of angelic yeah. looking. Lady. Yeah. So you can, what you can do is you can step into the card. You can, you can meditate with the card. You can see what that lady is saying to you. You can see what the line is saying to you and you will get your answers. You just have to, everybody has an intuition, every human being. You just have to learn how to tap into it. You use tarot as a tool with other healing modalities. Can you talk a little bit about that? Tell us a little bit about that. I use the tarot typically with two other healing modalities. One is healing with the Akashic Records. Now, the Akashic Records is actually this treasury of knowledge uh, of the human experience that is encoded and stored in this non-existent physical plane called the Akasha. I've learned how to access such information where we can break through huge blocks that we're struggling with in our lives, whether it's financial, material, you know, romantic or uh, emotional you know, so it, it typically helps with that. You can you can do a lot of clearings with that. And uh, when I use the, the tarot with the Akashic records, what I do is I first pull up a spread to see what guidance I get. So it guides me and gives me insight and clarity on the issues or the traumas I need to work with in, with the client in the Akasha. So if somebody comes with two issues, I will see what's coming up as more prevalent. And, uh, you know, I will feel into the energy of the cards. Then I will ask the Lords in the Akasha once I, you know, open up their records and then do the healing like that. And yeah. the other way is through family constellation. Now, family constellation is a method that attempts to reveal basically unrecognized uh, dynamics that span, you know, multiple generations, and um, in, in any given family and how some issues can be very detrimental or have some damaging effects to the dynamics in the family. So right. present day problems and difficulties may be influenced by traumas that have been experienced in generations of the fam previous generations of the family. And the individual who's asking for that healing is unaware of such traumas that have been passed on, you know, and it could be anything that would range from like suicide to murder, to death of a parent, to abuse, to war, to um, natural disaster, you know, it, it can go from any range and you will find issues coming from various family generations on any of these topics. And you don't realize how it's actually affecting you in this lifetime. We don't use the tarot cards 
while we're doing the family constellation. But yes, if the client says, I have this issue and two, three issues they want to work with, we check with the cards, what's coming up as what energy picks as, you know, a more prevalent energy that um, we need to work on, that's more urgent that we need to work on. And then we do go into the family constellation and there's a whole separate method of uh, doing the healing work here. Now, these two, these two modalities are very deep healing techniques that we use um, when we want to heal with the client. Tarot yes. is just a stepping stone into that, but it's not the primary, uh, it's not the primary thing that we do in, in these sessions. You know how the horoscopes talk about fate, while here you're saying we don't go into fate. How do the two work with each other? A horoscope would typically tell you what would happen in a particular, you know, in a particular time period or in a yes. particular situation that's very long term. What the tarot does is say you have, say, you know, a bad period is coming up, for example, okay, how to navigate through that bad period, you know, how to navigate through monthly, uh, you know, day to day or monthly moments in that, in, 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 you know, in that period, the tarot can guide you in that. Now, and also tell me about angel cards. So there's a lot of different forms of angel cards. There's all kinds of cards. So how do those compare to tarot cards? So angel cards are more like oracle cards. What happens with them is most angel card decks have mm -hmm. very, not most of them, actually all of them have very positive messages. So they're, they're mostly about positive messages that you know a client wants to read in that moment just because they want to feel good about themselves. I love them, I'll be very honest with you, but I don't use them when I'm guiding someone or empowering someone or coaching someone because it doesn't give me the reality of the situation. So what typically I do is after I finish the tarot card, the tarot reading with the client and, uh, you know, we've, we've finished everything and I've given them whatever insights I've had to give them, I will then shuffle angel cards for them right at the end, just like an additional thing that to just make them feel good. And what happens is the card that I pull for them, the angel card that I pull for them, typically it encompasses the entire theme of that reading. It's, it's like an assurance that the angels are there for you you know, and you're not alone. If, if I have someone who's, you know, who's someone who's still harsh on themselves, who, who's, who's constantly judging themselves, there's so much self-criticism. And, you know, that, that whole theme of the reading surrounds that. And I'll be shuffling the angel cards at the end. And suppose I pull a card like this. It kind of reaffirms that this is what the angels are also telling you. You got to be, you got to be a little bit gentle with yourself. You know, you've got to be, uh, you got to surround yourself with gentle people or situations or an environment, you know. I, I have people who come to me and say, you know, we really like angel cards. Can I pick up a deck or I'm please, of course, you're free to pick up the decks. When you go to the stores, feel the cards in your hand, feel the energy of the cards, see if you connect with it. Maybe you can go through Google and look at the imagery in the cards to see if you resonate with that imagery as well, because that's that plays a lot of difference when you want to pick up angel cards or any Oracle cards. So by all means, anyone and everyone can do an angel card reading because the instructions in the manual are very simple and very straightforward. It's just a few lines here and there. Do you have any last bits of advice? When you go for a reading, go because you really want to empower yourself in your life. You know, don't just go for the sake of it and then not make the change and then still go do what you want, because then that's the outcome you will receive. Can we do tarot for our pets yes. to understand what they're feeling or going through? Absolutely. It's the tarot works with any sentient being. You can even do it for a plant. It's energy. Everything is energy. The even an animal, even a pet is energy. So tapping into any energy is possible with the tarot. Even even those who have passed, you can even check tarot for that to see if their energy is around. So yes, you can you you can do tarot for pets as well. There are a lot of tarot card readers around, right? How do you know who to choose to go to? They're literally all over the place. Honestly, luck. Really, it is. It's all about luck. It's all about I. It's all about word of mouth as well. You can follow a few, uh, you know, Instagram handles or Facebook handles to see typically what uh, tarot card readers talk about on their web pages or on their pages, and then you know, kind of feel into the energy of of the reader before booking a session with them. So feel, use your body to feel the energy of a person that you want to go and see whether a tarot reader or even any individual. Thank you so much, Natasha. For Thank this you time. for having me. Thank you for listening to this chat. If you enjoyed it, please subscribe to this page. Please subscribe to our podcast on Apple and Spotify, Wellness Curated. 
and follow us on Instagram. Wellness Curated, the number one. Thank you.